This tutorial will show you how to use the OpenLS web portal. You can get to the link of the OpenLS web portal by going to the State Hygienic Laboratory website at www.shl.uiowa.edu. Next you'll click on the green test results button on the left hand side of the home page. Now click on the green Open LS button at the top of this page. Log in with the username and password that was provided to you by the State Hygienic Laboratory. After you log into the Open LS web portal, you'll see an orange banner in the left top corner with a series of buttons to the right of it. You also notice a welcome message and if there are any relevant announcements they'll be listed below the, the welcome message. You can always get back to this home page by clicking on the orange banner that says State Hygienic Laboratory. In order to download your results you'll want to click on the final report button at the top. You can search for your samples by any number of fields and any combination of fields. You can search by a collected date range, a release date range, one or more accession numbers, including a range of accession numbers, by a client reference or a project. These fields apply to any type of sample, whether it be a clinical, environmental, safe drinking water sample, etc. You can also search by the collector name for environmental and safe drinking water samples or the public water supply ID for safe drinking water samples. For clinical samples only, you can also search by the last name or first name of the patient or the patient's date of birth, including a range of birth dates. Most web portal users will want to search by a collected date range for environmental or safe drinking water samples and also for animal or rabies samples whereas clinical users will probably want to search by either a collected date range or release date range or the name of the patient. Many hospitals will have someone search the database by release date from yesterday's date to today and in that way they can download all the results that have been released in the last 24 hours. I can do this by clicking on the calendar to the right of release date and clicking yesterday's date. I have to click outside the calendar so that the date goes in the field. And then for the to field I can just click today's date. You'll notice that time is a part of the release date so in this example I am searching for any results released in the last 24 hours. My organization is a county public health department, so I have a mix of environmental, clinical, and rabies samples. I'm going to search from last October to today. So once again, I can use the calendars to help me put the date in the proper format. When I have finished entering my date range, I then click Find Samples at the bottom of the screen. Notice that four samples have been found, and it states that at the bottom of the list. Various pieces of information are displayed for each sample. In the first column is the sample's accession number. This is also called lab number by many labs. This is followed by the collected date and time, reference information, additional information, status, project, and attachments. In the reference information column, various information is shown depending on the type of sample. For an animal sample, the common name of the animal is shown. In this case, 
dog, because this rabies sample was taken from a dog. For environmental and safe drinking water samples, the collector's name is shown. For clinical samples, the patient's name is shown. Last name, comma, first name, and then followed by the middle name if that's present in the system. There is additional information shown in the next column. For animal samples and clinical samples, the provider is shown. So the last name of the provider, comma, first name of the provider. Followed by the organization that submitted the sample. In this case, Anytown County Health Department. For safe drinking water samples, the collection location is shown on the first line. On the second line is displayed the public water supply ID dash public water supply name. For environmental samples, the collection location is also displayed in the first line. The second and third line contain the address and city, state, and zip of the collection location if that was provided on the collection form. The status column shows whether the entire sample has completed testing or is still in progress. If the sample has a status of completed, then all of the tests have been performed. If it has a status of in progress, there is at least one pending test remaining on the sample. But there is also at least one test that has been completed and has results available for the sample to show up on the final report screen. If the sample has been assigned to a project, the name of that project will be shown in this column. So for the third sample, it has been assigned to the GTC IWS project. The last column shows the user if there are any documents attached to the sample. These attachments could be the test request form that was sent in with the sample, a copy of email correspondence between the laboratory and the submitter, a send out lab report, such as one from the Centers for Disease Control, and made possibly an instrument graph or some other piece of data. The number in the rectangle shows how many attachments there are. In this case, all four of these samples each have one attachment. If I click on the number in the rectangle, a list of the attachments are displayed. In this case, an attachment that starts with the initials TRF for test request form is attached to the sample. I then click on the name of the attachment and the test request form is then displayed. If I click on this attachment rectangle and then the name of that attachment I see that the test request form for this clinical sample is displayed. I am now ready to generate my final reports. All I need to do is check the box in front of each accession number of the reports that I want to run. Or I can click the select all button at the bottom if I want to run all the reports. Then click the Run Report button. Depending on what web browser you are using, you may get a message that pop-ups were blocked from running on this web browser. I'm going to allow pop-ups for this website. I may need to rerun my reports after allowing the pop-ups. In this case, I did not have to rerun them but they popped up automatically. And if, as I page through the file, I can see that all my reports are there. The final reports are all in PDF format, so I can either print them, or save them, or even attach them to the patient's record in my hospital information system. Through the OpenLS web portal, you also have the capability to download your results into a spreadsheet. 
Many people prefer a spreadsheet version of the results because it is often easier to compare results over time or maybe run test counts for your organization. I click on the spreadsheet view button. Next I'm going to search by the same collected date range as I used for the final reports. I can also search for any, by any of the same fields that are present on the final report screen. Next click on the continue to report fields button at the bottom. This next page has a listing of all the fields that I can output into my spreadsheet. I can choose what columns I want to be into my spreadsheet by selecting those individual fields or I can use the select all buttons to select all the fields in that grouping. I'm going to click select all for the sample fields, organization fields, and analysis fields. These fields are present for all types of samples, whether they be environmental, safe drinking water, and or clinical. The next groups of fields are only available for certain types of samples, but since I have samples from each type of sample domain, I'm going to go ahead and click the select all button for each of these groups. Next I have the test analytes. So these are all the things that were tested by the State Hygienic Laboratory. If I'm only interested in certain ones such as E. coli, I can check that. But if I want to see all the analytes and their results, then I should go ahead and click the Select All button at the bottom of this column. Auxiliary data is sample related information. Once again, I can select just the ones I'm interested in, or I can go ahead and select all of them. The last step is to click the Run Report button at the bottom of the screen. Now I'm going to open my Excel file. Notice that in column A is the accession number. Since each result or value is loaded into a separate row, it is important to look at the accession number to see what rows go together. You can see that rows 2 through 22 in this example are all part of the same sample since they have the same accession number. As I scroll to the right, I can see all the columns that I checked to be outputted into my spreadsheet. Towards the far right, I have the analyte column. These are all the things that were tested or the auxiliary information, which is a sample related information. In the column next to it is the value or result for that particular analyte. And of course, like any spreadsheet, the user can sort or filter the results. If I can't find a specific test result through either the final report screen or the spreadsheet view screen, it probably means that the test is still in progress. I can check on the test status by clicking on the test status button. When searching for tests that are in progress, I would not want to search by release date because that would only find me tests that have been released or finished. Instead, I would want to search by either a collected date range or some other field such as patient name for clinical samples. I'm going to go ahead and search by the same collected date range that I've used in the other two screens. Then I click the Find Samples button at the bottom of the screen. A table is now being displayed. At the bottom of the table 
it tells me that four samples have been found. The accession number is listed in the first column. In the next column, there is the sample and test description information. The sample description is in the first row, in this case dog for an animal sample, the collector name for environmental and safe drinking water samples, and the patient name for a clinical sample. In the subsequent rows are the name of the test and method. In the next column, test status, it will say either completed if the test has been finished, or in progress if the test has not been finished. Any test that is in completed status will have its results displayed through either the final report or spreadsheet view. Tests in progress do not have a result available yet. The next row has the collected date and time. This is followed by the date and time that SHL received your sample. The client reference, which is whatever the collector puts on the collection form. For many clinical samples, it might be the medical record number or the patient ID or chart number. The last column will contain any QA events or quality assurance events. These QA events are numbered, and the number goes back to the footnote here next to the test or sample information so that you can see what level this quality assurance event applies to. Since this number one follows a test and method name, I know that this quality assurance event only applies to this specific test and does not apply to the other tests on this sample. In the example down here on this clinical sample, the first quality assurance event applies to the entire sample since it follows the patient's name. The second QA event applies only to this specific test since it follows the test and method name. The last button, email notification, is an optional feature. I can sign up for two types of emails. The first one, known as the received emails, will list the samples that have been received from your organization by the State Hygienic Laboratory. The second type, the released emails, will list the samples that have either had one test or many tests released. In other words, those tests have been finished. In order to sign up, I click the Add button. I pick my organization from the drop-down list, I type my email address, then I check either received or released, or I can check both if I want both types of emails. Then I click the Save Changes button at the bottom. This is all you need to do for most organizations. For some larger organizations, you can also filter the emails by clicking in the Filter By column and selecting what you want to filter by. You can filter by the client reference, the collector of the sample, or the medical provider. If I'm going to filter my clinical samples by medical provider, I select that. Then I type the name of the provider. Then I want to make sure I save my changes. Lastly, you can click on the change password button in the top right corner to change your password. When you're done using the OpenLS web portal, it is important to log out of the system. This is especially important if you have clinical samples because those would contain protected health information.